Hello, I have been developing games for 5 plus years now and I've learned and completed the workflow process numerous times. There are three main stages to the perfect game dev workflow, those being the concept stage, development stage, and the polishing stage. Today I want to break each stage down and cover everything you should know, along with important pointers that will be sure to help you with your own game development journey. So our first stage is the game concept stage. This is just a stage where we kind of have an idea and make a simple outline to plan for our game. And we even create some concept art. Wait, dev work. So we already start to create art? Well, kinda, but not really. In this stage, we are going to make very basic and plain art. Remember, this is concept art, so what I recommend you do is just make some boxes in the color scheme that you think your game would fit. This art doesn't matter too much as it will only be used in our prototypes. Now for the idea, which can sometimes be the hardest but most important part of the entire game. So don't ever rush your thought process when trying to come up with an idea. Usually the best game ideas come to you when you aren't even trying to think of one. A couple weeks ago, I actually created an entire video covering this in way more depth. So if you are struggling with this, then maybe that video is able to help. Then our outlining and planning step. In this step, we need to decide on a place to plan out our project and organize our tasks once we have started. So we aren't lost in the endless game dev to do's and we know exactly what to work on. So for this, I recommend using a Trello or a Notion board as they seem to be the easiest for this. Create a card mentioning the initial plan and jot down all the little random ideas that you have for your game. Even the ideas that seem unreasonable. Once we finished all that, we then moved from the concept stage into the development stage. The development stage is where most of the work on our game happens, of course, and the best way to start developing is with a prototype. Now, the creation of this prototype is going to be difficult because you need to create all the main mechanics of your game, and this in turn means that you have to create even those mechanics that you don't know how to create. Now, don't let this scare you. If you come across a mechanic that you don't know how to create, just break it down to the most basic mechanics that make up that bigger mechanic, and recently I came across this Reddit post by Extension Arm that explains this all really well. So he shows that his problem is that he wants to jump over a chasm, grab onto the ledge, and pull himself up. That's a pretty daunting mechanic as it has a lot of different things that needs to happen. But he then breaks that mechanic down into a bunch of smaller mechanics. Like the mechanic of defining the ledge, then the mechanic of detecting when our player is close to the ledge, then only when jumping the character can grab the ledge, and so on. But you can kind of see how this makes it a lot easier to go about. I also want to talk about tutorials, because when creating your prototype, most people lean on tutorials to help them create the features in their game. And I honestly have mixed opinions on them. Don't get me wrong, they are great, but at the same time, if you rely on tutorials and you start to develop a feeling of needing those tutorials to lean on rather than learning to create things on your own. So I recommend that if you come across something you don't know how to do, then first look into the Godot documentations. Then if you can't find anything, resort to video or written tutorials. Now testing is going to happen all throughout the development stage. You are going to want to test out your game as much as possible and get feedback from others. But when testing, be sure to envision yourself as the player and not the developer, so you can understand how the player would feel while playing your game. Be sure to get feedback from other people, developers and non-developers, even export your game and let others from the community play it and give feedback from the player's perspective. Also in the development stage, we are going to have asset creation. This is where we will actually start creating and implementing the real art for our game. Now, to be honest, I'm not much of an artist, so I'm not the one to ask about this, but I am working on improving my pixel art skills currently, and I found these two videos to really help me out. So I'll leave a link to both of them in the description if you want to check these out. We will also need to learn level design. And I have a couple pointers here for level design. Of course, the level has to be laid out nicely, but a major thing that most developers overlook is how the camera plays into level design. How much of the level that the player can see is critical to level design and how the level looks. And how the level looks in the editor is completely different than how the level looks when the player is playing. I really recommend implementing camera effects and camera zoning as it will make a huge impact on how the level appears. The Phantom Camera add-on is perfect for this in Godot, and I will leave a link below to that as well. Now lastly, we have Game Code Implementation. This is kind of where we turn our prototype into our completed game by implementing all of the smaller game features, our sounds, and anything else our game may need. Remember, what we covered in the prototype stages are the same principles that are important here, but also make sure you are making use of your organization system or task board that we created way back in the concept stage as it will make developing your game so much easier and less confusing. Now, once you have made it out of the development stage, we will move into the final stage, the polishing stage. This stage is really simple as we are just polishing some rough corners and optimizing our game to perform smoothly. There are three major sections of the polishing stage, code performance optimization, level performance optimization, and if you are creating a 3D game, then polishing the lighting is also very important. Optimization can be a tedious process, but Godot actually has a really well-written doc about how to optimize your scene and scripts, and I really recommend checking it out as it covers different measuring tools, 
tips to pinpoint performance and how to improve it, and a lot of other topics over optimization. In this stage, make sure to fix any bugs that you have spotted, but really this polishing stage is just to make everything look complete and function to its best ability. I hope you were able to grab some good pointers to use throughout your game development journey. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you have any questions, then leave a comment and I will be sure to help you out. Thank you, and until next time, stay safe and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.